Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another mold making tutorial. You thought I was gonna say resin, because I've been doing all the resin. I guess we're gonna pour resin into it, so it's kind of like resin. Either way, um, I've made a couple molds over the last few years, and I thought I would share one of my favorite ways today. So when you look at making a mold, one of the very first options you'll usually come across is buying a kit. I don't have mine because I used it of silicone mold making material and I will put a link to it below. It comes a lot like resin with a part A and a part B. You mix them together, you pour them in a container with an object and it makes your mold. So that is what we're doing using this tutorial, this method, you can pretty much mold anything that you can put in the container and pour silicone over. So I decided to do a couple. I started with a salad plate and I've also done some knife rests. I've done a couple little beads and turtles and different things. The point is if you can put it in a container, you can mold it. So I'm going to show you all the supplies that I do have on hand and then we're going to get started. So the first thing you need is a container that will hold silicone. So a lot of people use old Tupperware containers or um, like with my knife press, it's hot up here. I actually used an old business card holder because it's plastic and the silicone will come out of it really easily. But when you are removing the mold, once it's cured, you have to get all the way underneath that mold to kind of pop it out release the air and get that mold out of there. So in a lot of containers like Tupperware, you end up having to cut the Tupperware off of the mold to release it, mainly on bigger pieces, sometimes smaller, but mainly bigger is what I found. So I decided to try something a little different this time. And instead of a Tupperware container, I grabbed, oh, hey, here's the business card holder. You can make molds in these, anything plastic or metal. I grabbed for this one a spring form cheesecake pan. And I am convinced I'm a genius because it worked like magic. So obviously if you were about to make this, you would have the bottom like inside. I already made mine. So life, love suit of happiness it's out anyways you would have it inside properly and then what I've done and I think I have it right here is I go around the bottom a bit a little bit of electric tape and I seal that whole bottom that way when you pour the silicone in here it's not going anywhere it's only going to stay right here so then when the mold is finished, I can peel off my electric tape. I can take a knife, go around the sides and then release the spring. And I don't have to cut my board. The whole mold just comes off, stuck to the bottom. And then I can peel it off the bottom. I'm convinced this is genius. If you think it's not genius, leave a comment. I won't believe you. Maybe someone else will, I don't know. I'm excited. So the next thing you need is your item that you're molding. In this case, I molded a solid plate. It's just a Better Homes and Garden one from Walmart. It was like $1.25, $2, something like that. You need your silicone and you're pretty much ready to go. The only other things you'll need is something to mix your silicone in. Um, I used a large silicone cup which was not genius, which was really stupid because silicone sticks to silicone. So now I have a large silicone cup that will always be silicone, but it did work. I just use it to mix more molds in. It's fine, but use plastic, something disposable that you don't mind if silicone doesn't come out of. One last tip before we get started. Now it went together easy. 
you have failed attempts. I had one mold that the silicone kit was, something was wrong with it. We're not sure what. Um, I've written the manufacturer, but I haven't heard back yet. Anyways, if you have a mold that you're not using anymore or you have a failed attempt, you can cut it up. I cut mine into chunks and then I used an old blender to chop it down into fine little pieces. And then you can pour this in your wet silicone, about half wet silicone to half chopped up pieces and reuse it. And that's great when silicone making kits are kind of expensive. I will actually show you on this mold exactly how that turns out. It's amazing. Let's get into the project. So the first thing we're going to do is just go over everything that you need. You need your silicone, pourable silicone rubber. There are lots of different versions of this. This is just one I got on Amazon. It is probably not the absolute best one or the worst one. So we are going to give it a shot. It worked pretty well last time. I just didn't have the correct size pan and then there was too many bubbles. So it made a big mess, but we've got the right size pan and we've got some tips this time. So we've got our, our silicone. You need a container. You need an item to be molded. You can do just about anything that's hard or durable. You need gloves because this is messy and you don't necessarily want silicone on your hands because it's nasty and it never comes up. We need some electrical tape because we need to shore up some of the holes in the bottom of this. Now this is one of the places I went wrong last time is I used a bit of silicone caulk to go around the bottom of this because I thought, oh, it's silicone, it's caulk, it should just peel right up. And I'll tell you guys, it did not peel right up and I had to scrape the bottom of this for days. So I have heard that electrical tape works to plug holes in molds and it should be much easier to just take off. The other thing that didn't work last time was that my mold had, or my plate when I took it out had bits of mold stuck to it and therefore my resin plate would have had imperfections if I had cast it. So I have heard that one way to avoid that is to brush a layer of your silicone directly on to your molding thing that you're molding so that it gets into all the crevices and has a really good bond. So we are going to try doing that first. We are also going to make sure we are fully stirred, which we did last time, but I had to go and get this stir stick. You can see a bit of that mold silicone on here. I cleaned it off so we could reuse it. So we've got the good stir stick. We've got our messy mold container. This is just a silicone cup that I have previously used for resin, but I didn't think about the fact that silicone on silicone does not come out like resin does. So I've actually used an exacto knife to literally cut all of that silicone away that was left on this. Um, but I'm not going to throw this away. I can still use it for things like this that I'm mixing. So we're just going to make sure to wash this out afterwards when it's still wet. That way we don't have to cut it all away. But when I say wash this out, I mean like with a garden hose outside. Do not wash silicone down your sink. You will regret it. All right. So we're going to get started. And the first thing we're going to do is our electrical tape. Mm -hmm. So the main thing right here is what we need to put a stop to is where the seam is. And this mold material is actually pretty thick. So I don't know that it would come out of this cheesecake pan, even if I didn't stopper it up. But you know what guys, I'm just not really willing to take that risk. I may have to go get some scissors. I thought I could rip that nicely and yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. So we are just going to run this all the way around the underside here. 
that way. Hopefully we have a nice easy release seal. All right. So right here, this line is our seam, okay, where top meets bottom. So that is what we are stoppering. So we're just gonna run this right around and make sure it's really on there good. I don't know about y'all, but I am filming this on Easter Sunday. Because <laughs> with everything going on, can't exactly go to my family's for Easter Sunday, so might as well make a silicone mold, right? So I hope y'all are having a great Easter, a great Sunday if you don't celebrate Easter. Great mold day. Great, great day for a mold, that's what I'm thinking. It has been really nice this week, but today, actually outside on my front porch. I do most silicone and resin things as A, ventilation, and B, puppies make it hard to do this stuff even in my craft room. I could close my door in my craft room and get away from the dogs, which is what I typically do when I'm crafting. Um, but then there is absolutely no ventilation in my craft room. So, Instead, I come out and craft resin and silicone on my porch, which is why y'all can probably hear the wind. Also, now that I'm almost done, I realize I probably could have time lapsed this for y'all because, you know, I don't necessarily need the whole around the world experience here but you are just lucky enough to get it anyways. All right, so we're gonna go past where our original bit was. <laughs> Guys, I have a really good feeling about this. A, I think it's gonna work perfect, and B, I don't think I'm gonna have to scrape silicone off this for hours. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. my teeth. Really professional way. Use scissors, guys. Alright. I'm just going to smooth that down. I always like to fold over a little bit. Um, that way I don't have to try to hunt for that edge and pull it up and it just makes it really easy to pull up. Alright, just make sure that is all the way down, all the way around, and the crack is and we are ready to get mixing. Okay, so let's open this bad boy. Wish me luck that this mold turns out perfect because this mold material is not cheap, but it is not, or not expensive, but it's not cheap. So it comes a lot like resin in a part A and a part B, as you can see. So we are going to Stir both of these individually really well. Um, you wanna make sure that you don't leave anything in the bottom that you may need. So stir it really, really well before we take it out. And then, and then we'll pour it both into here and stir it really well there too. I just realized I probably you need a knife after all. Aha! Who needs a knife? I've got a cock gun sitting here. Okay. There's part A. There's part B. Here's the silicone that I use for my other molds. Sitting by. All right, now, now is the time that you want to glove up, guys, because this is the messy stuff. Messy, messy. Let's 
so I don't know what all of the colors for silicone mean. I know that different silicones make different colors silicone and I'm sure there is a method behind them. I'm sure it means something, but I don't know what. So all I know is that this particular kit has a pink and a blue and together they make beautiful lavender colored molds. All right. So last time I used the entire bottle. I am guessing that this time I will also be using the entire bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this up really good. And I'll tell you, I'm going to use a popsicle stick because I just think I should. And then I'm going to use my paint paddle as well. I'm not actually just going to go. I'm actually just going to go straight to the paint paddle because That popsicle stick just does not reach down very far. All right, so you see how you can see the different striations in the pink? I don't want that. So you stir from the bottom up so that you pull all of that ever settled at the bottom up and mix it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse this because it's gonna take a minute. So we're gonna stir this one, I'm gonna stir this one, I'm gonna pour them in here, and we're gonna stir that one. Ready? All right, y'all. So as you saw, that takes a minute and we are not quite done, but we're, we're close. So make sure when you're stirring, you scrape the sides, you scrape the bottom, and you always want to stir as much as possible from the bottom up, both when you're stirring your purple and the pink and the blue and the containers. You really wanna make sure that everything on the bottom comes up and gets mixed in. So you wanna mix until it's a uniform color. So if you're stirring and you see any threads of pink, any threads of blue coming through, you're not done. I'm not seeing any right now, so I think we're good to go. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our plate is clean. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint this on to our plate. We're going to see if we think the sponge is better the brush is better, but I kind of think since this has so many round circle divots that the sponge will get in those better. That's my theory. So the reason I tried to use the bigger cheesecake pan last time is because this plate is a very, very good fit in this cheesecake pan. Like it fits almost the same size. And it's easier if you can pour around it a little bit, but it ended up the other one being too big. So this works, worked for me last time but we're gonna go ahead and do under the plate as well as on top of the plate because we need the bottom of the plate to be a mold too.
getting windy. Better get done with this so we can take it inside. Definitely, I don't leave it outside to cure because, you know, I don't want any leaves blowing in it or anything. Right, so I think what I'm going to do is, for the best of my ability, I'm going to hold it. And then I'm going to set it down to do the top. This is the best solution. I don't know. It is my solution. I'm going to get that edge. I want it to be a good edge. Alright, so we're going to go and set this down right in the mold. So, you can see what I was talking about that it's definitely a tight fit in here. So, make sure it's as close to the middle as we can get it, which is a little hard. There, that looks good. I'm getting pink on it from my glove. All right, keep painting. When in doubt, paint it out. semi-fast because this mold doesn't or mold material doesn't have super long working time you've got a little bit but within 30 40 minutes like it's gonna start being harder to work with get this groove real well because I had to sand had a lot of problems with that on the other mold. Had to sand a lot. Not of the mold, of the resin plate I made. And I will show you when I'm all done with this. However this mold turns out and however the old mold turned out. I know how the old mold turned out. definitely gonna get pouring so when we pour we're gonna pour from high up because you want your silicone to hit your plate whatever you're molding we're molding a plate in as thin a stream as possible so that there's as little bubbles as possible okay All right, I think, don't quote me, but I think we're good. So we're going to go ahead and pour and we're gonna pour from high up so it's a thin stream. Yes, it will take a while, but that's okay. for the mold.
popsicle stick might be better for this, but let's get it to the sides first. So this is why a slightly bigger container is better. And when you're pushing it, you want to try not to stir it too much because we don't want to create more bubbles. Use your paint paddle to push it down this last little bit, and then it's going to settle out, so we don't need to do too much. This should settle out. Maybe too blobby. I suppose we'll find out. I think it worked, you guys. So the three things we did lot different from last time were... Well, we brushed it on, we poured from a thin stream as thin as we could. I can't remember the third one. Oh, we, we stirred from the bottom. So stir from the bottom, pour it in the stream and brush it on. And we will see if that makes a big difference. Okay guys, I'm going to go clean up. I will be back in six hours, but it is already five or six o'clock at night. So I will probably be back tomorrow. See you then. All right, guys. So you're supposed to wait six hours for your mold to be ready. Um, but it was, it was dark then. It was the middle of the night. And then I had a bunch of doctor's appointments. So we've waited much longer than six hours. Hopefully that will make a difference. Let's start by taking this tape off. And it definitely worked. Look at that. You can see where the silicone met it, but it definitely held. So that was the best idea ever. Five second removal instead of like hour removal last time. So now all we have to do is take this guy out. So I'm going to take my little knife and I'm just going to go around the edges here 
until I think he's loose all the way around, which I just did. And then I'm going to try and release that spring form pan. And if you've released it enough all the way around, it should come out pretty easy. Didn't necessarily do everything in the back. So now I can press down and voila. I have to peel this stuff off, but my cheesecake pan should be clean and ready to go. So now here's the moment of truth. Okay, it went all the way down. See that? All the way around, all the way the whole thing. All right, you guys, let's see how it worked. And you can see how smooth it is on the sides. You can see the bumpy silicone on the top, but it, it molded pretty well to the side, so it should have molded real well to our plate. We just really need a point of entry here, and then we should be able to peel the whole bottom off. Breaking that seal. Oh, I think it worked perfect, you guys. Oh, don't jinx yourself now, Betsy. Come on. But I can already see it releasing from the plate, which is exactly what we want. Yes, it is. All right, so we're gonna release it all the way around. And we'll take the plate out and make sure to and get the air in all sides so that you don't rip your mold. So as I do this, I can feel it releasing from the front. And sometimes with a plate, you have to kind of slit it down here a little bit and that's all right, it won't affect the durability of the mold. So now we're gonna peel it back from the front Oh, you guys, it worked perfect. Oh, I can already tell because it's real. This is how it's supposed to release cleanly. Perfect. Come on. Oop, it's, it's pulling right there. Just pull that little bit off so it doesn't tear. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, that's not good. new problem isn't it but it came off cleanly it just tore right here oh but the mold is fine in there I bet we can fix that so you can see that the mold is absolutely perfect that is exactly what we wanted so what we're gonna have to do is come up with a way to fix this and we're probably just gonna glue it together, but we need a tight seal. So, you guys, it can't always ever be easy, can it? It's because it was so thin here. All right, let me think of a solution and I'll be back. All right, y'all, so we are done and our mold is finished. So I've actually made several plates out of this by now and they are beautiful. I'll link to that below. But this is how the mold turns out when you are finished. And as you saw, it tore. So this is the one dun, 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 with the fancy silicone patch and all of those little pieces. So the, um, the inside silicone is perfect there's all those little dots and all of this is perfect smooth beautiful using all of the ground up chunks didn't affect it at all the only place that you can really see them is on the open space where we actually poured our silicone and they didn't settle in and that's fine because it's now our bottom and that is how you can make a silicone mold of any object and use it to cast resin. Make one. Leave me a link. Show me what you've done. I can't wait to see. If you liked this tutorial, if you want to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the button, all the things. You know what to do. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.